I'm going to talk about Norton Simon. Does he have anything to do with the antivirus software? Yeah. Oh, okay. Proceed. <laughs> That's his greatest artwork. <laughs> it's taking 14 hours to scan my computer and being like, no, there's nothing here. Move along. <laughs> Norton Simon's weird. All right, next next topic. <laughs> like, I've read the word visionary. Yeah, all right. I have trouble racking my brain around art collectors who are good at business. Like, that just seems, I don't know. They seem to be businessmen who, who are like, well, people like art, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess it is it, yeah. yeah. Something about commerce and art and, like, mixing them together doesn't seem good. Yeah. But, like, some the people... Match made in heaven. <laughs> there are some people, though, that appreciate art, know its value, and are good at business. I guess maybe I'm just so, like, low in the in society. You can't appreciate either. I, yeah, I have no idea of... All you have respect for is... The bloody fist <laughs> <laughs> which is my favorite band yeah but but norton simon is a renaissance man he's like a self-made well, well let's get started norton winfred simon was born in february of 1907 in portland oregon Ugh. portland breeds weird people from my understanding of <laughs> film and tv references his father meyer simon owned a department store there in portland which some think may have gotten probably where he got, weird probably super weird they probably sold weirder. like hair or something <laughs> uh, that's probably where he got his itch for entrepreneurship the family which involved i believe it's norton simon and two sisters then moves to san francisco and by all accounts norman is very savvy businessman he graduates from high school when he's 16. He gives UC Berkeley a quick try before dropping out. And by 18, has moved to Los Angeles and started a sheet metal distributing company. This every, is, everybody, this every everybody kid's start. dream. This is in 1925. It's cool back then. Cool, yeah. It was like uh, Silicon Valley. Around the same time, 1922. Sheet metal planes. <laughs> it's like what beer crafting is now. It's like starting a brewery. Back then, it was sheet metal. It was just a different <laughs> time. Around the same time, 1922, the privately endowed nonprofit institute known as the Pasadena Art Institute is established. And two years later, is in Incorporated. It was founded by local citizens in hopes of encouraging Los Angeles residents into a study of fine arts. They managed to claim the Reed Mansion, which is a 22-room Victorian house on nine and a half acres of land situated at the corner of Orange Grove and Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena, a spot known as Carmelita Park. Carmelita. Any relation to the Carmelita Provision Company? I didn't look into that, but let's stop the episode and find out. <laughs> Here we go. This is where Chorizo was born. The chorizo pits. <laughs> oh no, they're seeping in. <laughs> Get some scrambled eggs. Get the three is quick. It's spilling everywhere. Everyone Invite your extended family. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to eat all this chorizo? <laughs> Why? Yo. <laughs> so in 1929, as we always have to mention, the Great Depression hits Los Angeles. It's not uh, as cool as the recession, though. No, it's not. Mm. This ain't your daddy's depression. <laughs> but it might be. And it leads to But it to might it. be because it's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> the depression hits, but Norton Simon has no plans on being depressed by the depression. It's 1931. And while most Americans were eating their own cats to survive. <laughs> Norton Simon was eating his neighbor's cats <laughs> to survive you don't where's cinnamon they say <laughs> my cinnamon did not live up to her name i'd say you don't eat from your own stock <laughs> that's how you make it don't get full on your own litter just have good neighbors state farm norton simon invested seven thousand dollars in a bankrupt juice bottling company running out of fullerton what exactly what who what it's the depression i have seven thousand dollars who needs money that even in the best of times that doesn't <laughs> sound like a good investment watch what he does all right this was the first of his many acquisitions he takes this bottling company and he turns it into a company that cans tomato products and during this he kept prices low and greatly expanded the operations of the newly named valvita food products hmm. initially the company had annual sales about forty five thousand dollars a year but by the end of the decade he built a business into a nine million dollar corporation around 1932 he why gets are, why is that why do people need that many canned tomatoes? Sending them off to war. I have no idea. <laughs> so many Italians were coming <laughs> in the country at that time. That's all they wanted. <laughs> Come uh, to America. They, we have canned tomatoes. <laughs> now with more canned tomatoes. Every other country wanted to give them squash. We got you looking for. So around 1932, he gets married to a woman named Lucille. And about six years later, they have a son together, Lucille? Robert. Lucille? <laughs> I don't remember the rest of that song. <laughs> that's you, all it is, really. Yeah, what else do you need? He quickly merged these two people into Lubert because that's all he knows how to do. <laughs> in the early 40s, he sold the company to Hunt Brothers Packing Co. for $3 million. And then two companies, Hunt Foods and Valveda, merged. But he wasn't done there. He then bought stock in Hunt. And in 1943, Norton gained control of the Hunt Brothers. And the next year, became the chairman of what was now the industrious Hunt Foods Incorporated. <laughs> but why stop at canning and bottling? <laughs> Over the next decade, Simon and Hunt Foods expanded and diversified and became a can made plant and a glass plant and the company went on to national distribution which is like a money rain dance once you go <laughs> national cut back to Pasadena Art Institute in 1942 April of that year the PIA joined with a newly created Pasadena Museum of Art and set up shop on their new headquarters at the Grace Nicholson Studios on Los Robles Avenue it's now where the Pacific Asian Museum is at a year later the museum along with again the aid of local citizens managed to pay off the mortgage there at this point Grace Nicholson gave the studio to the city of Pasadena as a gift and in return the city leased the building.
ceiling back to the museum for no cost, which lasted them for 25 years. The transaction between the museum and the city also meant the new museum building could be built at the Carmelita property on Orange Grove in Colorado, which meant they had two buildings now, one where they can educate people about art and the other place where they can actually display art. Back to Simon, though. Through a series of strategies, mergers, and acquisitions, Norton Simon created every megalomaniac's dream, <laughs> an industry named after himself. <laughs> Norton Simon Incorporated. Multi- still, no antivirus? No, nah, not yet. How could it? Look, look, but look, again, how could Arm and Hammer not be related to Arm and Hammer? Exactly. <laughs> I feel like these two people are made up. Yeah. They're like personifications of a company. <laughs> One corporation gave birth to a little boy. <laughs> when two corporations love each other very much, because corporations are people, according to Congress. <laughs> so Norman Simon Incorporated is a multi-industry, multinational corporation that included Hunt Weston Foods, if you're familiar with the tomato yeah. sauce. Oh, of course. McCall's well, Publishing. Okay. I call it ketchup, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you call it? What am I catching up to? <laughs> Use tomato juice on your french fries? Or? <laughs> yeah, put V8 all over it. It's also McCall's Publishing, Saturday Review of Literature, Canada Dry Corporations, Ginger Ale. Well, I like this. Max I Fa- like these things. <laughs> these are things that I enjoy on a daily basis. Ketchup and ginger ale. <laughs> it also includes Max Factor Cosmetics, which you also like. It's the only one I wear. And Avis Car Rental. Oh, the only one I drive. <laughs> and also the one that this 25 episode old podcast drives. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, we, our sponsor is now Norton Simon. Yeah. Norton Simon, please back us up on this. Please. We'll his, let you put any virus you want on our computers. <laughs> Even the dirty ones. His conglomerate of corporations. You know the ones. <laughs> We're not going to name it, but here's uh, the list of names. <laughs> His conglomerate of corporations had a long list of products ranging from Popular Mechanics Magazine to tomato sauce. But why stop there? If you're like Norton Simon, you are perpetually restless and dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. Playing the business games was very rewarding, but by 1969, he had seemed to achieve all he sought after. His conglomerate corporation almost ensured that he'd be wealthy until he died, which I looked into. His stocks were worth more than $50 million by this point. And a new interest... Jump change. Toss it around. Toss it... Who are you? Eli Broad? Sorry. I'm sorry to the bro family. Broad. Broad. Like a bunch of bros did something bad to you and you're telling the cops like I've been broed I've been got broed <laughs> hey let's not make fun of me he's the most powerful man yeah no, he he currently he just walked in right now uh, Mr. Mr. Broad. Broad Mr. Broad Mr. Broad you've got a lovely daughter <laughs> <laughs> she's quite the broad um, so at this point in his life a new interest slowly started to take prominence in his life and that's art collecting uh, yeah it's a late in the life thing it is. for broad also yeah. is it yeah that's weird well I mean they don't care <laughs> <laughs> like they have nothing else to do so <laughs> what's that thing yeah, yeah bring it over here it started 15 years earlier in 1950 after his home was built. And I can't really find out where that was, but he purchased works of art to decorate his new home with. Mm-hmm. It started with a Gauguin, a Bonnard, and a Pissarro. And he said he was hooked after that. And just like Norton Simon, when something seems interesting, he throws himself headfirst into it. He began acquiring works from Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, who he seemed to focus more of his attention on. Was He has a big Degas collection. Around this time, to go back to the PIA, Pasadena Art Institute received a gift of 500 artworks from the estate of the German painter and collector Galka Shire. Galka Shire. Galka Shire. <laughs> who were represented in artists like Kandinsky, Klee, Julensky, Feininger, and many others. And along with the work came personal correspondence with them as well, which is pretty cool. The gift beefed up the Pasadena Art Institute's stature and made it one of the richest collections in the world in regards to modern art. A year later, and with a new collection, they changed their name to the Pasadena Art Museum to refocus the building to the acquisition and exhibition of modern art. And with forward momentum, the Pasadena Art Institute continued to develop. They added a 85,000 square foot structure to the original building on the Carmelita Park and began acquiring landmark artworks and receiving donations by artists like Ellsworth Kelly, Roy Lichtenstein, Ed Rusha, and Andy Warhol. Who? Andy Warhol. Uh, blonde, short hair, glasses, turtleneck. Oh, that cute woman from the yeah, 60s? The, the cute woman from the 60s from the factories. Yeah. You know the factories. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah. We were all there. Parting. Uh, it's just me, Andy Warhol, Yoko Ono. A lot of colors. So many colors. <laughs> in November of 1969, a new Pasadena Art Museum opened to the public, but almost immediately, they were in debt. <laughs> also around this time, 1964-ish, Norton was beginning to lean more into philanthropy and politics. He became a trustee of the Los Angeles County Museum of History, Science, and Art, which he brought up, where he got close to and mentored by Robert Brown, who was one of the yeah. black guys who quit. Was, I think he was the first one. Yeah. Simon was a regent of the University of California. He served on the board of Carnegie Commission on the Future of Higher Education. He served on the board of Reed College, as well as the Los Angeles Music Center, the California School of Professional Psychology, and the Institute for Advanced Study. And in addition to all of this, he was also on the board of LACMA, which you've brought up already. Mm-hmm. And in 1970, he ran a unsuccessful bid for the Republic Senate nomination, where he frequently opposed Governor Ronald Reagan, the actor, uh, who had harsh stances on administrators <laughs> and students. Secretary of State. <laughs> he didn't win that. And so... You mean Norton Simon wasn't president? You don't remember that? We talked about this before. He's not on the dollar bill. That's Jackson. That's Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Soon to be Harry Tubman. Harriet Tubman's on all the money now. 
<laughs> we can't distinguish what's what because she's on everything. <laughs> Split me a Tubman. <laughs> and so by 1964, Simon has these two really strong foundations, the Norman Simon Foundation and the Norton Simon Art Foundation, actively building and displaying his art collection. The first big purchase that the Norton Simon Foundation got was the remaining pieces of the Devon Brothers in New York, their collection, which included old master paintings, Italian marbles, Flemish tapestries. The pieces of his collection were being displayed at the newly built LACMA building, but as his art hunger grew past their capacity, he started lending his collection to other galleries all over the world. And all this art stuff was getting really consuming, but 69, 70 for him were really tumultuous years, so I can kind of see what he's doing. Aside from losing the race for the U.S. Senate, which was a big deal for him because he doesn't know loss very well, his son Robert committed suicide around oh, this time, God. and his marriage of 37 years to Lucille was ending. Oh, Lucille. I wish I knew the rest of that song because I could jump <laughs> in with you. I could see him collecting art full time to be more than a hobby and more than work. It was like a well needed distraction that was formulated to like be a replacement panic and something mm. like the panic and celebrate over, yeah. you know? He puts himself full into this, so he's like, yeah, I'm the, nothing else is happening. Yeah. It's just me and my day god. <laughs> so it's 1969 at the age of 62. Norton Simon resigned as the director of the Norton Simon Incorporated to concentrate his time fully on collecting art now. After stepping down, Simon reduced his investment in his conglomerate to $1 million worth of stock, but he set it up so he can continue to receive a retirement income of $113,000 in a year, in addition to $60,000 a year as a consultant. So he's fine. Don't worry about yeah, Simon. He'll be all right. A year later, Norton! Norton! Ah, oh, Norton! Norton went on a blind date with an actress named Jennifer Jones who had roles in A Duel in the Sun, Beat the Devil, and The Man in Gray Flannel Suit. The two were married by 1971, and while on their honeymoon in India, he became entranced by Indian art, more specifically South Asian art, and began collecting that. Before this, most of his works were largely focused on European art. Also, around this time, he was distancing himself from the LACMA board since Robert Brown had resigned some years earlier. Simon was not pleased with other board members and found himself constantly at odds with them over things like museum architecture, which he brought up already, and competition among donors. Well, Simon eventually resigned, like you said, in 1971 with the intent of establishing his own museum now. And who is he to do that? A rich man who's a self-made man? <gasps> who is he? A capable man who can do it? <laughs> so it is now March of 1973 and he wants to build his own museum. And at the same time, Pasadena Art Museum is struggling to pay their bills. This is in the March of 1973. It is all going down. The Pasadena Art Museum goes through another name change, this time to the Pasadena Museum of Modern Art to reflect more closely its intent on education and exposition. But a name change wasn't going to solve the ever-mounting problem of debt that the museum had accrued. After years of struggling with financial problems, the trustees of the PMMA reached out to Norman Simon, and if there was something Simon knew all too well, it, it was, was MMA. mergers. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? What did you say? Mergers, acquisitions, mm -hmm. bring it all together. Catch MMA. <laughs> yeah. MMA. The merger of my knee into your teeth. <laughs> and now I own your teeth and my knee still. So the deal between the two would be that Simon would pay off the museum's $850,000 trouble with their debt and refurbish the $6 million structure. In return, he would have five-year rights to hang his collection of old masters, 19th century impressionists, and early 20th century paintings, and display his European and Southeast Asian sculpture in the building. Simon would get 75% of their physical space to display his collection, while the PMMA would get the remainder for their contemporary art. Simon says, To look over the new museum would be a 10-member board of trustees consisting of four members from Simon's group, three from the Pasadena Museum group, and three public members nominated by Simon. You could already <laughs> see it's sorry. Yeah. It started to unlean. I mean, this, starting this to lean. Fair. Yeah, this is totally what he wanted. Yeah. We're going to have four of my people, three of your people, and three clones of me. <laughs> <laughs> handsome guys, aren't they? <laughs> They're a handsome little bunch. <laughs> so in June of 1974, the museum closed its store for renovations, and renovate it did. Kylo renovate. <laughs> That's a joke that no one's going to get. So around this time, the Pasadena Museum of Modern Art merged with the Norton Simon's astounding private collection of art and reopened in March of 1975. They would temporarily change the name back to the Pasadena Art Museum, but that was eventually, of course, changed to the Norton Simon Museum of Art at Pasadena. Oh, it has a nice ring to it. It's got my name on it. Many art enthusiasts were not happy about losing another home that could house contemporary art over another place where already established classics were going to be seen. But even then, many agree that Norton Simon had one of the best private collections of art in the world. And Simon, shrewd business that he was genuinely had a love for art that was similar to Elizabeth Holmes Fisher who felt that art needed to be accessible for educational and inspirational reasons for formal and informal learning and this spot on Orange Grove and Colorado Boulevard would be the place for that. Great intentions and executions aside Simon slowly weeded out contemporary art and many on the board were furious about this. They had discovered that he had intentions of selling some of the contemporary works at an auction and the former trustees put out a civil suit against Norman Simon and the museum. They were claiming that Simon was seizing the physical space for his own collection and Simon seizes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the game is about, right? 
our acquisitions, right? Simon didn't say seize, <laughs> but this time he did. So they're all claiming that he is seizing the physical space for his collection and selling works that didn't fit into his collection for his own personal gain. He fired back, calling them irresponsible for putting the PMMA in the debt in the first place. Like, don't bring that up. Yeah, well, you're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> his only real defense against them was he did give them their time with the 25% of their collection. And now that the, the stipulation's over, he was allowed to take as much as he wanted. He paid the debt. This is now currently his museum. Go away. Now, he wasn't brought down by the civil suit, but it did sour him some. For years, there were rumors of him taking his collections out of Pasadena and moving it to San Francisco. And there were actual plans at Precious San Francisco. Oh, God, there's so much fog. Of, like, how are you going to see it? There were actual plans at some point to move the collection out of Pasadena and to the Getty mm. over to Westwood. But Simon withdrew from that months before it was enacted. Hard times hit him in 1984 when Simon was stricken with a neurological disorder known as the Goulan Barre syndrome. I think that's what it's called, which sounds like a painter. I know that because I can't pronounce <laughs> the it. The irony. Yeah. Simon refused to be defeated by a paralyzing illness, but after some time, he was wheelchair bound. Mm. Him and his wife continued making deals for years, but in 1989, Simon resigned as the president and trustee of the Simon Museum and he passed away in 1993. His own collection of treasures included Madonna from Raphael and an altarpiece panel by Giovanni de Paolo, the 15th century painter. The Simon Museum has over 12,000 paintings by artists like Gauguin, Matisse, Picasso. During the 1980s, his collection was appraised at $750 million. Whoa. But more than the monetary value, Norton Simon has given the city of LA tomato paste and one of the best <laughs> private collections of the world to see and it's right off the 134 freeway. That's Norton Simon. Norton. 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 I like the Norton Simon Museum. Yeah, I like it a lot. I haven't been there in a while, but I I enjoy yeah. it a lot. It's like going to LACMA is sort of like, all right, we got to do, we got to yeah. go to LACMA. We got to do this. Yeah. But Norton Simon's kind of like, eh, let's go hang out. Yeah. It's smaller. It's exactly. manageable. It's nice. It's very, it's it's in a good area and it's always off yeah. the beaten path. It's one of those museums yeah. that like you kind of forget here. Yeah. And exactly. It's not a bad thing. And it, I don't want to go see a bunch of kilobytes and how to <laughs> solve my virus problems. I don't want to go look at that. Oh my God. It's beautiful in here. I love this. And if you forget like what it looks like, just Jerry's? turn into the Rose Parade every uh, New Year's morning. You'll see the Norton Simon, yeah. which I'm sure he like bought New Year's and merged it with a better holiday. <laughs> New Year's brought to you by <laughs> Tomato Your new, Paste. Your New Year brought to you by Avis Car Rentals. 